Hello all, Fable here. It is still raining. This is so depressing. I wish I could have just stayed in bed and did nothing all day. But work calls. And I was thinking back to after Frank had passed, my friend and her husband, uh, her boyfriend, they've been together a long time, almost like a husband, um, kept saying that we should go to their church. And it's just a Christian church. And Frank and I never got to go. So she was trying to get me to go after Frank. And then this one it was a Saturday night service and I said you know what I'm gonna go and there was this speaker and he said when him and his wife first got married um, and they were saving for a house they were living in a small apartment and he came home one day and well they had gotten wedding money and that's what was in their savings at this point and he comes home with this, what she thought was a piece of junk car. And he shows it to her and then says how he spent all, not all, but a good portion of their savings, their wedding money that was saving for a house. And he's like, can't you see it? The I could see it. You know, um, he saw past the rust. He saw past the three different colors that were on the car. He saw past the ripped seats that he could put, you know, new leather seats, clean it. And he saw the vision of what this car could become. Rebuild the engine, brand new, everything. She could not. And he said then he did all, you know, all the work, took him time, did it slowly, and it became the car that he envisioned. And his message was that we might be broken we might have holes in us we might well not literally holes in us but holes in our heart or you know a hole where something was um a void per se and you know we might have you know just just not look where they're still on the inside, but on the outside, we can't see that person. And then we become that person that we envision. And then everybody else sees it, what we envisioned ourselves. So it was a very strong message. And I wish Frank had lived another couple weeks to hear that because I think it would have helped him because he did talk about you know children that are abused and broken down and told they're nothing and then they become they envision what they could be and they become that and then I went to a bible study for her with her, with my friend and Bible study group. And I didn't think it was my thing, but I have to say I really enjoyed it. When I went, they were breaking down different parts of the, the Bible and they say, we all sin and we justify it. And how they, you know, equated it is when you're driving and the speed limit's 55 and you're like, oh, I'm doing 65 because everybody else is. So you're justifying it. But, uh, you know, I'm not doing 80, that car that just was by me. So, and sometimes you get caught. You know, you'll get caught by a cop to, because 
of speeding and you justify it. You're like, well, I'm running late or, you know, I was keeping up with traffic or, you know, everybody else was, but you're answering to this cop. And this is how we answer to God. And I'm not an over-religious person. Don't get me wrong. I'm not. Um, but just, and I've been feeling this lately. Um, my one friend um, met this guy and now she has a place to live. You know, they were together a while. She was living with her daughter and splitting the rent and you know, living cheap and then living with, you know, now she, after a couple of years, she's living with him and his house is paid off and they're going on all these trips and vacations. And then my other friends just sitting at a bar and then this guy started chatting and this guy's got money and they, again, they travel where, and I'm like, I'm not saying I want to meet a rich man and my one friend, he's, he's not rich, but he does well for himself. I wouldn't say by any means he's rich or comfort, comfortable, but I'd say he does well where my other friend, her, the guy she's seeing now for four years, um, he lives comfortably. I don't know. I just, I shouldn't feel jealous. But I kind of do. I'm like, how did they meet someone and I didn't? And I think it goes back to my video yesterday that I wasn't giving 100% to myself, of myself, to, I wasn't giving that off. Um, I can't do what my friends did. I, I, I really couldn't. Um, one is like, told her two older kids, sorry, you're going to have to find a place to live. You know, can't move when we move. Um, you know, and the two younger ones just stayed home. Um, my other friend, same thing, figure it out. I, I, can't, I can't do that. And and I know other people too, like, um, have told their kids, listen, I can't afford to do this. And my brother and sister-in-law actually have taken in friends of their children because the parent, um, was like, we're moving and I, I, I there's no room for you when we had to move out of the house and be in Hazlitt for my daughter to finish, you know, school, high school, where she started her last year, I took a place that was so small that we couldn't even put a kitchen table in the kitchen. And my, in the living room, first night sleeping there, something crawled across me and I looked and I took a picture and I and throw it out and it was a, a cockroach and that just creeped me out and there was bugs in there and it it, it just, we just sucked. my kids were not happy I know that but to get the bedroom I would have to sleep in the bed with my daughter because her bed fit in dressers and my son had a futon and you know at night would put the futon down and then put it up you know to have more a little more room in his room and I slept in the living room. It's just, I had to do what we had to do. And if need be that I could only get a one bedroom, me and my daughter would have shared it. My son would have slept on the couch because that just would have made more sense. But we would have had, we would have did whatever we had to do for that. But I, I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm adjusting my hair because all of a sudden it's very warm in here. Um, so, but 
other people or like and and people have said to me what if you one of your children now need a place to live I was like I would then say you've got to pay the difference of what it's going to charge me because I'll get kicked out of the affordable housing you know part portion of rent that's the best I can do um, I wouldn't tell them they couldn't live with me, but so I've always, so I'm kind of, they're on their own. So I have to let them be on their own. And I think now, like I was, I think, you know, not giving a hundred percent. And one other thing that I liked is how the Catholic Church doesn't recognize divorce because it's until death do us part. Um, well, it says something about the death of the marriage. The death in the marriage. I'm not sure of the exact wording. But how they equated it is that... Um, the marriage has died. The marriage has died. Until the death. I think it's till the death of the marriage. Um, death in the marriage. Death in the marriage I think makes more sense. But again I don't know 100% if I'm correct. But. And they said when one person is not no longer in the marriage. The marriage has died. And. So that's what the Bible is saying. So you mourn and people say a, a divorce is like a death and you have to go through the emotions of just like you do a death, all the different, you know, stages of emotions. And I'm like, oh yeah, okay. So... this is really weird. There's this couple and she's got short hair as a woman. And I really thought it was Gaia guy at first. And they're a couple. And you can clearly tell they're an older couple together. And they kind of look alike. They say if you live someone long enough, you look like them. But that was really scary weird. Because, like I said, she, I thought it was a guy until I saw the pocketbook, the earrings, and, well, the, you never know. But, um, so, the way they broke down the Bible, and it kind of makes sense. If one person checks out, the marriage is dead. They, they've killed the marriage. Um, somebody, you know, is unfaithful. They've killed the marriage. They, 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 so I, I don't know if everybody agrees with this, but it kind of, oh my gosh, um, sorry, I'm trying to adjust my air here because it's just one minute freezing, one minute, and it is rainy out, so I wanted it a little warm, but so... I think I have justified like and I, I think I am afraid to get involved with someone and get hurt again lose someone and I know people there you know I mean I was with Stephen like year, almost a year and a half and I knew the last half year was just going through the motions and I finally stood up and was like, listen, th this isn't working. And I kind of said, you know, and if I didn't say anything, I think he would have, you know, the way things are going, he would have been fine with it. But again, I think I, he saw an opportunity in me 
I'm not saying he didn't care for me on some level, but I have to believe he did. That I wasn't totally 100% used by him. But, so, and there's someone else I'm kind of hanging on to. And I think I have to let that go. And there's a song, um, oh, You Keep Me Hanging On. And I am allowing that as much as he's, you know, dangling that carrot, as me and my friends say. It's, I'm allowing it to happen. I'm allowing myself. I take a bite of that carrot and then another bite and then another bite and then when the carrot's gone I'm disappointed so I think I just have to say let it go and give distance will I miss him? yes because he's like my best friend um, and he says that to me and I think and he said, I want, never want to lose you as a friend. But I think I have to. Because although he sees a friendship and more than friendship. But not enough for a relationship. I want that more. And I can't just do friendship. So, I don't know. They say you should be with your best friend. And, I mean... We have crossed that line and that's amazing so I don't get it but I don't know I, I and my friends have said his issue not yours and I had to learn that in my marriage it was his problem his issues not mine I tried and I tried so with this I have to say the same thing I have to say his issue, his problem, not mine. So, and I just have to just really back off and let, let him go. And when I was with Frank, I didn't even think of him in that way. So I think I have to back off and allow myself to be 100% involved with someone and say sorry dude like you know um, not be so quick to answer him not be so quick to be available to him and I know that's bad I mean I, there was a time I was like I have to end this uh, we can't I can't and he knows how I feel and I think he plays on that so um, he's like, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize. And I'm like, you didn't realize really? And he's like, I'm so sorry. And we didn't talk for the longest time. And then we talked and I, I think his fear of losing what he has now in our friendship is stopping him from let's take a chance. I don't know. Like I said, I think he has other issues too. So, but I'm going to end this now. And i like some feedback on, do you think when it says death in a man, until there's death in a marriage, that means until the marriage is dead. Or are they just putting their twist on it to make it, you know. Also, justifying what we do. Even though we know it's wrong, but we make that justification so that we feel better. So, I don't know. It's just, it's a jury day. And of course, I'm thinking jury, so sorry about that. But, just some food for thought. Okay? Talk to you later. Bye.